Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Windows at home so it is accessible from the internet. And after you complete this setup, you will be able to remote desktop into your Windows from anywhere in the world as long as you have access to the internet. So the first thing that we need to do is install OpenSSH server. And to do that, we're going to need to open our PowerShell. So go ahead, click on start. And here you can type PowerShell and make sure to open PowerShell as an administrator. So right click on it and click on run as administrator. Once PowerShell is open, all we need to do to install OpenSSH server is run the following command and press enter. This could take a while depending on your internet speed, but once installation has completed successfully, you can just confirm and make sure OpenSSH server was installed by running the get service command. And as you can see, we have OpenSSH server installed and currently state is stopped. So the next command we need to run is the start service command and that will start our OpenSSH server. And I'm gonna check the status again. And as you can see now, our SSH server is running. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it so it starts automatically on boot. That way, if your system reboots, the SSH servers will automatically start. And to do that, we're going to run the following command. And once we have all that done, just make sure that a rule on your firewall got created that allows traffic on port 22. So usually that happens when you install the OpenSSH server, that rule will automatically get created for you. And to check, make sure that that rule exists, you can run the following command. And we do have that OpenSSH server rule that it's running and it's allowing inbound traffic. I will leave it that way because I want my computer to be accessible from the entire internet. Now, if you're planning on only remoting into your computer from a specific IP, you may want to disable this rule and create new rule that only allows from specific IP addresses. And then I can put the command on how to do that in the comments under the video. But for now, just for this video, I'm just going to leave it open like this as uh, most people will probably want to be able to access their computer from anywhere around the world. So you don't want to be restricted to a specific IP. Again, it is safer to restrict it, but in my case, I would just leave it like this. Is This is just a demonstration. So once you confirm that um, your ports are open, um, you have your SSH server up and running, the next thing that you want to do is create a user that is specific just for this SSH tunneling session. So we have our user, our Windows user, that will remote desktop into this computer uh, that will be your regular user but we're going to create a special user and that user will be only used to establish the secured connection between the remote machine and this computer and then then you're going to use your other user to log in into actual windows session and we're doing that for a better security so the first thing that you want to do is go click on start and open your computer management app so you can type computer computer and you, it should prompt you here with computer management and make sure you open this one as an administrator. And once you have that open, click on local users and computer groups. And here we're going to create a new group and I'm going to call this group tunnel just like this. And this will be just a basic group. We're not going to attach anything to it. This is going to be the group that our tunnel user will be added to. So I'm going to go here now under users and I'll create a new user. And that will be our tunnel user. He will be very restricted. All he will be able to do is establish a secure SSH tunnel connection from the remote machine to the server. So I'm going to call him tunnel user and make sure you give that user a very strong password. And you can uncheck this here and make sure that you said that the password for that user never expires and then you can go ahead and click on create. Now once your tunnel user is created, you can go ahead, right click on it and click on properties. And what here, what we're going to do is we will remove him from this users group and we will add him to the new group that we just created. And that way he will be very restricted. Like he pretty much won't be able to do anything on this computer. So once you have your user, you remove him from all other groups that he may be a member of and just add him to that new tunnel group that is just like a dummy group there and just keep him that way. So the next thing that you want to do is open your security policies app. So you can click on start and type sec Paul and local security policy apps. We're going to open this one and we're going to run it again as an administrator. 
And I'm gonna show you there's a couple of things here you may wanna change. So if you click under account policies and go under account local policy, since you're gonna be opening this computer to the internet, you may wanna make sure that you adjust those a little bit better here. So for example here, if somebody's trying to brute force into the system, you want to kind of get disabled, right? And in this case, it's gonna wait for 10 tries before it gets disabled. I usually set that down to three. So after a three failed entries of uh, the password, this tunnel account user will get disabled. And currently it's set for 30 minutes. I'll leave it that way. Now you can increase this time. You can decrease it however you want to do it, but make sure that you know, you're know you aware of the settings here because this is a good practice to have accounts get disabled if wrong password is entered. Again, uh, not a hundred percent proof, but it's something you know better than better than not doing anything. So I will set it up that way. You can adjust it the way you want it. And then the next thing that we're gonna to wanna to do is we will go ahead and open our SSH server configuration file here and then we will do a couple of changes to it. So to do that, you can just open it with notepad and this is the path to the file. So I'm gonna go ahead here and press enter to open the file. And if you scroll to the very bottom, we can leave everything else by default. We don't really care much about those settings. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna comment these two lines out because right now the way it's set is all the current administrators on this computer can SSH. So once we turn this off, these users won't be able to SSH anymore. And the reason we're doing that is because we want only that tunnel user to be able to SSH to this computer, right? So what we'll do here is we're gonna add a few extra lines. I'm gonna go ahead, copy and paste them. And I will put them under the video so you can uh, copy and paste same as me. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. I wanna paste them at the very bottom here. So just like this. And here now what we're doing is instead of allowing all the administrators, uh, we're allowing only the, tun the tunnel user. So the only user that will be able to SSH will be the tunnel user. And the only rules that we will apply will be these rules that are set under here for this tunnel user. And so we're gonna allow TCP forwarding. We need that. We're gonna allow a tunnel. We're gonna disable the TTY and uh, we're gonna force this command. So basically what this would do is it will make it so the user can't run any commands uh, once he connects to the system. He will be able to establish an SSH tunnel connection between the remote host and this machine, but he won't be able to run any other commands. And we're turning off X11 forwarding. This is pretty much the safest you can have it. So once you have all that done, you can go ahead here and click on save to save the changes to your files. And then the next thing that you want to do is restart your SSH server. And to do that, all we need to do is run the restart service command. So I'm going to go ahead and run it. And once your server has restarted, um, again, you can check and make sure that your SSH uh, service is still running. And yes, it is. And then the next thing that you want to do is, and this will depend on what brand and model uh, router you have on your home network, but um, you will need to open your router and in your router, you're going to have to set up port forwarding. So in my case, I'm using an Orbi system. So in an Orbi system, it is under advanced setup and port forwarding. So depending on what you use, it may be in a different location, but basically search for something that's called either NAT or port forwarding and make sure that you set up a port forwarding. And what you want to do is you want to forward port 22 on your router to the Windows box that you're trying to expose to the internet, right? So in my case, this will be this Windows machine here. And to set up this port forwarding, you're gonna need to get your local IP address for that box. So in my case, that's 192.168.0201. And if you don't know how to get that from your machine, all you need to do is you can run IP config. And then here you can look for your um, in my case, this is a wireless connection. So under my Wi-Fi address, it will be this one, 192.168.201. So in your router, you're gonna have to enter it and you're gonna tell it that we're gonna be listening on port 22 and we want port 22 on our router to be open. So once you have that set up, you can go ahead and save it and you should be all set. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna move on to my Mac and my Mac is on a different network. So I'm gonna pull up my Mac's public IP. And as you can see, it is 107.77.89.90. And from this Mac, I will be connecting to 
this machine here and let's pull up the public IP on this machine. So if we say curl if config I O, and that will give us the public IP. Again, remember the difference. This is the local IP for your local network. This is the public IP. This is the IP that is accessible from the internet. So this is the IP that I'm gonna go on to to connect from my Mac. So now on my Mac, I will run the following command and this command will establish the SSH tunnel. So it will connect me from the Mac via SSH to create a tunnel. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter. And if connection is successful, you'll be prompted to accept the server's fingerprint. So here I'm gonna say yes. And then you're gonna be prompted for your password. So again, that will be the password for your tunnel user, right? This is not your Windows user that you use to log in and work on. Like for example, in my case here, I'm logged in with a user called administrator. This is not the administrator password. This is the tunnel user password. So here I'm going to enter the password. And it seems like my connection was established successfully. If it wasn't, I was going to get some error. But as I told you earlier, you won't be able to run any commands or anything. It will just stay like this and you always have to keep this terminal window open to keep your tunnel connection open. So once we have this tunnel connection established, we can go ahead and remote desktop to our computer. So here on the Mac, I'm gonna open my Microsoft remote desktop app and I'm gonna add a new computer. And here where it says PC name is where you wanna put your host IP address. So. Um, I know it's called PC name and a lot of people get confused, but this is where the IP goes. And in our case, I'm not gonna put the IP of the server, I'm just gonna put local host, right? Since we are tunneling into it and it's acting like we are on the computer, I'm gonna run local host. So all you need to do here is type local host. And then you can go ahead and click add and that will create a connection for you. And then you can double click and that should bring you with the prompts to log into the machine. Now, one very important thing that you need to remember is before you're able to connect, you gotta make sure that the user that you're connecting, and in my case, this will be my administrator user, has a permission to connect remotely. So to do that, we're gonna go again into our computer management app, and then under local users and groups, you're gonna find the user that you wanna connect with. So in my case, it's the user administrator, and you're gonna to go to properties and member of, and make sure he's member of remote desktop users. So let's see, remote desktop users. If I do check name, there we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Now that I added him as a remote desktop users, I can go ahead and save this. And back on my Mac now, I can go ahead and try to connect. So administrator and enter his password. You can click continue. Oh, I didn't like the password. Let's try it again. And if you enter your password correctly, it should work. As you can see, I got booted off from my computer here and now I'm connected on from my Mac. So as you can see, I'm on my Mac and I'm remoted into that server and I'm doing this from the internet. And now I can work on this computer the uh, same way as if I was at home. And this is how it's done. I hope uh, this video was useful to you. If you have any questions, let me know. And if you want to see more of my videos, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.